Welcome to Coffee and Conversation. My name is Honorin, and today I'm with Bodurin Akinrimade, who is pursuing a PhD in education policy and evaluation. Bodurin, welcome and thank you for being with me today. Thank you so much for having me here. Let's start with a little introduction. My name is Bodurin Akinrimade. I'm a PhD candidate um, in the Department of Educational Leadership and Policy Studies. I'm currently studying. PhD in education policy and evaluation. Um, also, I, I am from Nigeria. I was born in Ondo State, Ondo Town, Ondo West in Nigeria. And also I, I once worked for an organization. Um, the name of the organization is Allogen Security, um, Al Allogen Security Limited. And what we usually do there, what I usually do for them there is to um, help them to write MBA in security management modules. So I also help them to, you know, manage their MBA in security management programs. And I'm currently in my final year, currently my final year of my program, where I'm writing my dissertation on the use of private tutoring and its relationship to literacy and um, numeracy outcomes of children in Nigeria. Well, welcome to the club. I'm also in my final year <laughs> writing my dissertation. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so tell me more about this um, um, research that you did in Nigeria. Um, was it supposed to be like that late in the program or were you stopped by COVID? Um, it's actually, I actually traveled to Nigeria at the right time because uh, when I did my qualify, after I'm doing my qualifying exam, we call it uh, a preliminary examination mm -hmm. in my department also. So after doing my preliminary examination, I had the opportunity to defend my pro uh, proposal. After defending my proposal, then I wrote my prospectus. My prospectus is um, comprises of chapters one to three. So after writing that, I, 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 I defended that and I passed with no revisions. So after my defense i traveled to nigeria to gather my data to analyze you know to analyze my findings you know to analyze my data and to conclude things conclude uh, reach conclusion based on the data i gathered from nigeria so uh, it's i traveled to nigeria at the right time actually and i was able to meet 15 parents it was it was it was a fantastic experience i because i had the opportunity to meet uh um, low income parents, middle income parents, and high income parents. You know, uh, you know, I, it's it's really fascinating to see parents investing so much in the edu education of their kids so that they can have better future. I can remember I interviewed um, a parent, and the 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 parent told me the the mother of the child told me that I believe that hiring private tutor for my child will enable him to acquire foundational skills. And she believes that this foundational skills will enable a child to, to be useful in the future. You know, she said she believes it's, it's a way out of poverty. So she struggles so much to go to the markets to sell granuts. So after selling granuts, she saved a lot of money to ensure uh, a child, uh, you know, a child um, have access to, 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 to private tutorials so that he can improve his foundational uh, foundational learning skills. So she she told me specifically she pays one thousand naira. Converting one thousand naira to American money or um, dollars is one one dollar fifty cents every month to ensure that his child have access to high quality private tutoring. So you see the struggle parents pass through in order to like give the best education to their kids, you know. And also, I had the opportunity to meet high income, a high, a high income, and I would told me that because of a stressful job, she 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 owns uh, an hotel, and she also she also works very hard to ensure that she takes care of the family. Because, and she said, before she gets back from work, she'll be so tired. Because of that, she she had to hire a private tutor to assist her child to do, you know, his his, his homework so that the child will be able to acquire you know, reasonable or um, important foundational learning skills that will make him useful in the future. So parents are passing through a lot to invest in the education of their kids. And I and they believe that this investment will surely yield returns in terms of learning gain and in terms of uh, um, high earnings for their kids in the future. 
That's very interesting. So why do you um interview those parents? What um what was the goal behind that research? Okay. Um actually it's no more in news uh, right now in Nigeria. Uh millions of kids cannot read and write, they cannot solve basic numeracy questions. So uh parents are worried about the academic performance of their of their children. They are worried about the foundational learning skills of their children. As a result of that, they, they hire private tutors to, to assist their kids to learn, you know, how to read and write, to assist their kids to do their homework specifically. They believe that once they hire private tutors to assist their kids to do their homework, the, the foundational um, foundational skills of their children will improve. However, Nigeria, we all know Nigeria is, is, is a low-income country whereby, you know, many millions of people are living in poverty. So, you know, despite the financial burden that this private tutor is creating, parents are still, you know, investing heavily in private tutoring for their children. So the question I, 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 I ask from the parent is, why are you still investing in private tutoring despite the financial burden it creates? You know, I want to know. Like, I, I, I need to know why they're still doing that because the poverty rate is increasing in Nigeria with the existence of COVID-19 pandemic. You know, many parents have lost their job. Instead of them to look for ways, you know, to end their living and to, to, to manage their money, they're looking for ways to invest in private tutoring because there are millions of private tutoring centers in Nigeria. So this, 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 that's, the one of, that's one of the major questions I ask from the parents. Another question I ask from the parent is, um, how, do they, how do parents perceive the academic impacts of private tutor uh, assisting their children with their homework? How do they perceive the academic impacts? Is it actually improving the academic performance of their children in schools? So these are the questions I ask. And parents, were, based on my preliminary findings, you know, parents are saying that, oh, they believe that, you know, hiring private tutor is helping their kids to improve their reading and, numer uh, reading and numeracy outcomes. And also parents are saying that they need to like invest in private tutoring because it's the way out of poverty. It's a way to improve the functional learning skills of their children. But um, if your conclusion is that, yes, uh, private tutoring is needed, would that mean that then the school, the educational programs are lacking um, like either good teachers or good instructions? Like they must be lacking something if the parents must hire private tutorings for their children to succeed. Yes, yes, absolutely. You know, it's no more news that the quality of education in Nigeria is, is low. You know, so if if this, my study is saying that private tutoring is important, my qualitative and my quantitative studies are, are, are saying the same thing, are saying that a private tutoring is really important. It means, indeed, there's something wrong with the quality of education in Nigeria, and there is a need to improve the quality of education in Nigeria. In, there's an urgent link to improve it. You know, and, and you know, the truth of the matter, if my finding is saying that private tutoring is important, the truth of the matter is that improving the quality of education will take time. It will be a long-term plan. Uh, it will be a long-term um, project for the, for, the, for, the, for the Nigerian government. So for the meantime, I would, see, I would still recommend that government should find a means to ensure that you know, parents have access to, 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 to grants that will, or scholarship that will enable them to like, hire private tutor for their children. For the, it's, that's, that would be a short-term solution, pending the time that will improve the quality of basic education in Nigeria. So in conclusion, if, if indeed my finding is saying that um, private tutoring is important, definitely there is something wrong with the quality of basic education in Nigeria. And there's, in, there's an urgent need to improve the, the quality of basic education. Would that be one of your goals to work for the um, education? Um, I don't know how it works in Nigeria, but maybe like ministry or um, to improve basic education in Nigeria. Yes. Uh, uh, like, like I said uh, in my profile, when I was writing, you know, during my profile, when I was explaining my profile, uh, you know, um, I wrote it there that my research focuses on improving educational assets, learning outcomes, and school completion rates of children in Sub-Saharan Africa, in the world actually, but especially in Sub-Saharan Africa. Because if, if I really want to make a big 
difference in the, in the society. I need to start from my home country, my, home, my own continent. And also, that doesn't mean that I'm not doing research here in the U.S. too. I'm doing research that are, research that is also improving, you know, the uh, improving the, the the learning outcomes of children in in the U.S. So, so I I, I believe that my my goal is to is to do that. So, I, I need to collaborate with ministries of ministries of education in Nigeria. And but my 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 goal right now is to ensure that I get a research oriented position in an international organization where we have opportunity to work with scholars in the US, you know, scholars in the US to, 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 to embark upon research. And this research will be able to bring out evidence-based policies, practices, uh, programs that we can we can back upon in sub-Saharan Africa to improve the quality of basic education over there. You know, and I will also, alternatively, I would also like to work as a professor at a college here in the US, where we are, we have opportunity to also do research. And this research will enable me to get evidence-based practices, policies, programs to improve the quality of basic education in sub-Saharan Africa. And also, you know, when, when I embark upon evidence-based, uh, when I get back upon evidence-based projects, in a US government, like USEID, will be able to sponsor my grant my, my project, and this project will be implemented in developing countries or in sub-Saharan Africa. So oh, I found your research fascinating and purposeful. I love how That's... passionate you are about education. It's Thank um... you so much. And what advice would you have for students applying to uh, grants? Well, it's it's tough. It's not easy. But just make sure that um, your, your, your the problem you want to solve is very clear. And how your research wants to address um, your, the problems you want to solve, um, you should state them clearly state them clearly. So once people see that you're indeed solving a problem and your research is really indeed helping, should indeed help, help to solve that problem, definitely you'll get grants. It's highly competitive idea as I did to get grants. If you get re rejections, don't give up, keep applying. And you definitely see an organization that will definitely support your research. Because for anybody doing a PhD program, definitely the person We'll be looking forward to solving the problem. So just make the problem clear to people or to sponsors, and you definitely find someone or sponsor that would that would love to like fund your research. So besides being passionate about education, um, what are your other passions and hobbies? Oh well, um, I love going to the beach. Um, I love it so much. Um, also, I love um, watching football. I'm an Arsenal fan. Whereby I love, we, they call it soccer here in the US, but in the UK they call it uh, the soccer. In the UK they call it football. So I'm an Arsenal fan. I love watching Arsenal matches. Also, I love playing football. You know, I go outside with my friends to play football once in a while. You know, um, you know, I I see movies too. I see movies, but you know, I I I I pay more attention to my academics. So I love I love research. I love research. So I pay so much attention to doing research. Apart from research, if, I don't, if I'm not doing research, you see me watching soccer, you know, playing soccer. Um, how do you see yourself in five years from today? Yeah, I, I see myself solving educational pro problems. I, in five years from now, I see myself working for, uh, for an international organization, solving problems related to learning outcomes in the world around the world, beginning with Sub-Saharan Africa. You know, that's where I see myself. I see myself working for an international organization as a senior research advisor, trying to provide evidence-based solutions to um, um, educational um, problems in, in primary school level of education, a primary level of education. That's where I see myself five years later. All right. Well, thank you so much um, for your time and your passion. Um, it was an inspiring interview, and I'm so glad we had a chance to do it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity to share my work with the world. Mm -hmm.